So I grew up with Final Fantasy. Man, I loved it ever since my uncle brought it over back when I was about 11 years old uh, on Christmas vacation. Popped it in and it was just the coolest thing I had ever seen. It, it, I was instantly hooked. Um, I loved that game so much. I still love it to this day. And then I ended up playing Final Fantasy 2 and uh, again, it was a fantastic game, excellent music. Uh, the story just really sucked you in and it, it was just, I, I loved it. So when Final Fantasy 3 was about to come out, you know, I was all over that. So it was October 1994 and the game had been released. Now I was working at a crummy ass job as a busboy at Country Buffet. So you could probably imagine how disgusting that was. And man, I, I couldn't take that. So, um, but I did work there. I mean, I needed money. How else was I going to get games, right? So I remember that the day it was released, I got out of school and I went down to the local Toys R Us. I wasn't too far away from us and uh, too far away from the high school. And uh, they had Final Fantasy three and the game was $75. It was insane, 75 bucks. Uh, 1994, $75. Games were usually about 50 bucks at the time. That was about the norm. $75, but I bought it. I bought it for 75 bucks. But man, what a great game. Like, it blew me away. Like, just how when it f first opened up, like, all the Mode 7 they were using. And yeah, I was impressed by Mode 7 back in the day. So you got Terra and Biggs and Wedge, you know, walking down in the Magitek armor with the Mode 7, the fancy Mode 7, and Caveman me, man, like, ooh, Mode 7. You know, man, I love it, dude. It was awesome. I was impressed. I liked it. Um, the whole opening, it was just like watching a movie. It was fantastic. But then, yeah, what do you know? I got grounded and I got the game taken away from me. Like, right at the beginning of the game. And I was just like, dude, what the hell, man? And, and I don't even remember what I got grounded for. Um, and, and now that I think about it as an adult, I was like, man, I, I bought that Super Nintendo with my own money. I bought that Final Fantasy game with my own money. Like, how can they take that away from me? You know, I... Pfft, I think about it now, dude, when I was a kid, you had to listen to your parents, you know, as a kid, until I stopped listening to them, but that's a whole different story. Uh, but, <laughs> so, um, I got grounded from it, and I couldn't play it, I wasn't allowed to play the game, and, you, you know, I was, I was, like, really getting into it, I was really getting into the story, and I was like, oh my god, I gotta, I gotta see what happens next. So me, what I would always do is I would search the whole house when they weren't home and find where they hid my system. Naturally, I found it. And uh, what I did was I took it down into the laundry room down in the basement where there was a tiny little TV there where my mom would watch it while she like uh, did laundry and iron clothes and folded clothes and stuff like that. So what I did is I took the, <laughs> I took the, the Super Nintendo with Final Fantasy III down there I hooked it up in this little cave of a room and um, I would play there at night while my parents were upstairs and I have the volume really, really low so I could like hear every creak to see if they were coming. I could, you know, like shut the game off and just pretend like I was doing laundry down there, you know, throw some clothes over the Super Nintendo, whatever. But I had all the lights off and man, I had some of my best memories playing that game, <laughs> hiding in that little basement. And that little basement laundry room um, going through the serpent trench and again ooh, mode 7 man all the mode 7 juicy mode 7 I loved it um, like it really I, I thought it was awesome and then the phantom train going through the phantom train was just it was so awesome it, it, like I don't know the whole mood when I was like in the dark dingy basement you know, I was like into the train, looking through this little 13 inch television screen, just like, you know, my nose to the screen, just like really getting into it. And, um, you know, it just has a real <laughs> sad ending when Cyan, you know, sees his family, they're going away. But man, this game had everything. It had, you know, the, the fantastic music, the graphics were like a huge upgrade over Final Fantasy II. Uh, and then the story was awesome. The, you got the floating continent. That was really oh, a real pain in the ass, really. That part is so tough. 
uh, but then you have the, the planet where, you know, it implodes on itself. Then you have the world of Ruin where you have, like, some really tough quests, and, and the game just takes a really dark tone after that. Um, and then you got the Fanatics Tower, which it's the tower where you can only use the magic and like, I don't know, I, I love doing it. Like, I'm, you know, call me a nut, whatever. I, I think it's fun. It's one of my favorite moments in all of video games, to be honest with you. Uh, so I love doing it. Um, the game is just fantastic. The funny thing is, is that back in the day, because I was grounded all the time, and what would always happen, because I was always freaking grounded, uh, is that my sister would end up playing the same role-playing game and since I wasn't allowed to play I'd end up watching her play through the whole game and then beating it and then I wouldn't play it because I just saw her beat it. She did that with Final Fantasy 2, she did that with Fantasy Star 3 uh, back in the day. So um, yeah, she did that with Final Fantasy 6 so I actually didn't beat it until years later. But, <laughs> but uh, I've beaten it a few times now, and it's just, I, I love that game to this day. But I, I will always remember uh, when I first went down to the Toys R Us, picked that game up, uh, shelled out all that freaking money, oh my god, <laughs> 75 bucks. Uh, but man, it was worth it because the game is fantastic. Still one of my favorites to this day, Final Fantasy III, hell yeah. Mm -hmm.